Today I have one of my good friends, Daniel, with me. And, and we're going to be speaking about you know, what the future path is and how we're going to take our lives moving forward after uni as we are now graduating and, and it's all coming to an end. So welcome to this podcast and yeah. So I wanted to start off with you just introducing yourself, you know, telling everyone a bit about who you are and also what you want to do in the future. Of course, um, so I think as most of us said, my name is Don Elmer. Uh, I grew up in Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, but I've been in Manchester for the last three years. I studied at the University of Manchester and graduating uh, next month, hopefully. Um, we have a future plans. Uh, I've always kind of wanted to represent Pakistan on a global scale. And kind of the path I've chosen is through music. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's a kind of a brief okay. intro to it. Well, I mean, you spoke about representing Pakistan, so let's mm -hmm. start off with that. Sure. What sort of motivates you to do that and what so, what connection do you feel to home? Obviously studying, as you said, mm -hmm. in, in the UK at Manchester and also planning to live here in, yeah. in the future. Yeah. How much of a connection do you actually feel to your home country? I think that's, that's very difficult. I think, you know, obviously having to leave my country you know, for education or whatever, yeah. it's, it's quite difficult to, you know, kind of have that same thing where you don't know if you're going to come back fully to the same extent you've lived. Yeah. Um, but for me, obviously, culture is very important. I grew up in a household where we just spoke Urdu, which is, uh, you know, for people that don't know, is the national language Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, so naturally, you know, I, I grew up in like a, a very traditional Pakistani family. So culture is something that helps me keep grounded, and, yeah. you know, stay grounded. So I've always kind of wanted to, you know, represent Pakistan because I feel like a, there's not a lot of representation yeah. currently uh, in, in the global market, you know. There's a lot of musicians that are Pakistani, but that they stay within Pakistan. There's yeah. not that many that operate on a global scale. And um, I've always wanted to question like a good representation of Pakistan. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, you know, a brief way of Yeah, yeah sure, sure. So I wanted to get more into, you know, the music aspect. So. Mm -hmm. How did you start off musically? Like what? So, so maybe tell everyone about like what your mu music journey has been so far mm -hmm. before today, and also like what yeah, your yeah. current plan is, and also if you have any goals. In of the course, future. of course, of course. So, um, I actually didn't think I was a kid that singing was like a big deal, which is quite quite strange now. But I remember I was in like you know year one, year two, or grade one, whatever system you follow. And my mom kind of enrolled me in like these singing classes with yeah. this. Um, Kind of popular Pakistani musician who used to come to school and then teach us. And so I, I, I kind of say, like, since I was like six, seven, it started off then, but that was like just one of those things where, you know, you have a kid and you just want to put them into something. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I came on, funny enough, I came on TV on like this show called Bache Man Ke Sache. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for like, you know, a couple of weeks, uh, yeah. we used to film and shit. So I wanted to talk to you about, you know, how it's been so far, the journey, musically, uh -huh. what you're currently doing or working okay. on, yeah. and if you have any goals for the future, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, it's been it's been um, a very interesting journey. I thought I thought it'd be quicker than it was. Yeah. You know, in my head, you see a lot of these people who are supposedly one-hit wonders or whatever. Yeah. But when you're actually into it, you realize it's it's more than that. Like. You know, not your first video goes viral, yeah. and so I started in the first lockdown, 2020. Yeah. I started posting covers, yeah. and I posted a few covers, and you know, people started liking them. I got shares and stuff. So mainly, it's been a lot of covers. But currently, I've got a song that I'm uh, releasing. Okay. Maybe it's out by the time this podcast is out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's a project. It's very interesting actually. We worked on this project called 24 Hours in Manchester, okay. where we wrote, recorded, produced, and filmed the whole song and music video within 24 hours. Okay. So okay. Um, yeah, that's my first original. Is that a concept out. you've like seen or heard of before, or you tried to just L a little bit? I, I did it with my cousin. Okay. And he's artistically very good. So right. we met up and we decided that you know maybe try something unique because everyone does right, right. a new single. But yeah, this yeah. this concept is already grasping as it is. I feel yeah. Like. yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's quite interesting because I wanted to get into also what motivated you to start mm. and more so about, you know, how in home, yes, at home, culturally, what? in yeah. a Pakistan, Pakistani environment, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be difficult to, to go for careers that involve higher, higher risks, you know, yeah. such as music or sports yep, or, yep, yep, you know, yep, and yep. parents tend to be less supportive when I their agree. kids want to pursue these dreams. So maybe share about 
like speak a little bit about how it was for you and what advice you'd give to other people that are maybe in your position but a few years back? That's true, that's a very good question. Um, so what motivated me just to, just to start it off? Yeah. Um, I think I always, since I was around 5, 6, I knew this 95 sitting in an office was not for me. Not for you. I am a people's person. I like being around people. I like, you know, entertaining people. Obviously, you know me. Yeah, so yeah. These people know me. But um, so obviously, you know, I wanted to do something that I could have an impact on people and yeah. entertain them and stuff. So music was something, you know, I realized when I was around 14. Okay. That, you That's know what, this is something that, or 15, that I, I can sing. I didn't, I didn't think it was a big deal. Yeah. But I was like, you know, people like what I'm doing. Yeah. And if through this I can, you know, have an impact on like, on people or entertain them basically. I'm not even going to go that deep. Yeah. You know, because right now I'm not at that stage where I have the power to influence that many people. Yeah. But also talking about the second thing you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, I think culturally, yeah, it's, it was, it was difficult <clears throat> for myself to get my, the head around the concept. Yeah. My parents were very, very supportive. Okay. I told them and you know they were like yeah that's Would fine. you say that's unusual then? In in the society I grew up in yes. Yeah. But I was very lucky that my parents were very supportive. Okay. Uh, people around me, you know, a lot of them wanted to do certain things but their parents had a very big influence on them. Yeah. To the point where their parents voice was kind of outweighed theirs. Yeah. But when I told my parents I said listen this is what I want to do. And mm -hmm. you know they were like they were supportive but they, all they said was do it but put your all in. Put your all in. So yeah, but for People that want to, you know, do this, I feel like you have to not care. Because yeah. even I told my parents, I said, look, I'm doing this, whether you are with me or not, I'd prefer you with me. Yeah. But yeah, and after that, they understood it, so yeah. Makes sense. So tell me about your inspirations. What actually motivated you to, or what or who motivated you to sort of start your career musically mm -hmm. and and really keeps you going through those times where you know you don't want to do it or you don't feel like doing it? That's a good question. Um, I'd say I, I'm someone who really values the cultural aspect of you know where I, where I come from and yeah. I want to make that quite evident in my music. Yeah. Um, so obviously I know everyone here who knows Zen Malik. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a very big Zen Malik fan and obviously part of the reason that I do like him is because he's Pakistani. Yeah. Um, I think when I did find out I was like wow like I don't know any Pakistani who's made it. Like, yeah. you know, obviously he's British Pakistani, but still as close as you can get. Yeah. I think definitely, you know, seeing him and the impact he's had on the South Asian community globally. Yeah. Um, you know, was like, okay, I just, something I want to do. Yeah. But, you know, for me, I wanted to kind of kind of increase the scale because if because I was raised in Pakistan, yeah. I feel like Pakistanis can resonate with me more. Yeah. That makes sense, you know. Yeah, and it does, it does. It, they have a have a closer connection to it, yeah. And yes, I think he's he's a main inspiration. He's my probably my favorite artist. But and I see a lot of a lot of musicians right now. The Pakistani scene is popping. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's every there's a few artists here and there. Um, so what would like your identity be? Would it be similar to his of like British Pakistani, uh -huh. or do you want it to be like just Pakistani? How would you market yourself? You know, as Absolutely. where you're from and, okay. and where your roots are. Okay, so I, I think I think I've so I've thought of this and I've told a lot of people about this. Yeah. But I want to be known as Pakistani. Yeah. But I don't want to be known as a Pakistani singer. Okay. Now, let me explain that. Like, there's a lot of Pakistani musicians. Yeah. Who make songs in Urdu. Right? Yeah. And they're obviously they're huge. Yeah. But they, you know, they tour around the world, but they just appeal to the Pakistani audience. Yeah. So people that go to the concerts are Pakistanis. Yeah. You know, so I want to make music that Pakistanis can listen to. You know, we're in Turkey right now. Turkish people can listen, can listen to, to yeah. anyone can listen to, you know. So yeah. obviously, I, I want to be known that I'm Pakistani, yeah. you know, to have that representation because I, I want Pakistan to be represented on a global scale. Yeah. There's very, very few people, not just in the music industry, overall, that represent Pakistan in a good way as well. Yeah. I feel like a lot of representation is not your accurate representation, yeah. like not just Pakistani, but I also want to kind of show a good Muslim representation as well. Uh, and I know a lot of people will be like us. It sounds a bit, you know, hypocritical with music and everything, but yeah, um, yeah that's what it is. But yeah, I want to kind of make music for everyone, so not just yeah. Pakistanis. Yes. I mean, you touched on that. I think it's good we should speak about that mm -hmm. a little bit. That is, was it hard to sometimes do music, even though people may think that, not necessarily just religiously, but just culturally or just in the society yeah. where 
you know, we spoke about before that it's it's, it's like just a high risk thing to do. Yep, absolutely. Were there any moments that you felt? I know you're just starting off now, but you felt like you know what? I should just not do this. Is it even worth it? Because you're studying at uni, nonetheless, mm -hmm. right? So it's like you still have a different avenue which you could go. Yeah. Um, through. Yep. So yeah, just like talk about that maybe a little bit. Yeah, no, definitely do. I think in this industry, just general social media. Yeah. Um, and I hope people who are watching this can take something away from this. It's so easy to compare your life to other people. Yeah. Especially when you know I started doing covers and stuff on my Instagram for you page. I'd yeah. see people, their Instagram page is popping, and I'd see oh you know they're getting these many views. Yeah. Or these many followers in such a short time, and I was like. Well, I think I'm better than them. Yeah. So why? Not in a narcissistic way. Just no, you know, no. Just from what you see. Just, just yeah. from what I've seen. Or and uh, but then you know, it's then I realize everyone has their own journey. Yeah. If I compare myself to them, yeah. then I'm gonna try, you know, trying to up them. And yeah. That's not good because the competition should be me versus me. Yeah. You know, try to better myself instead of um, comparing myself to other people because then it's very easy to fall in the trap where you kind of just feel sad you compare to other people so it's it, it's really bad because i know people that started one of my flatmates actually okay. who was a musician and he stopped because of all the stuff he see on social media oh, actually. and and compare himself so i think it's just seeing how people have taken it and how it can lead to a negative thing and just remind myself that you know i'm waiting for the ultimate goal yeah so this obviously there will be hardships yeah and although i'm starting i can't really say i've experienced that many yeah. But it's just it's just mentally you have to be strong, you know. Yeah. I think that's what it is. So what are your goals? You just we just touched upon you yeah. know, long term goals and also yeah. tell me about short term goals and, and also more for people that maybe are in a similar position how to relate to, how are you going about achieving mm -hmm. them and mm -hmm. differentiating mm -hmm. yourself with now the millions of people that are attempting yeah, you know the yeah, same yeah, careers yeah, yeah, yeah. especially with social media you know yeah and new outlets such as TikTok, etc yeah a lot of more people are getting exposure at a younger age yep so it just makes it even more difficult but also provides an opportunity for more so right. yeah just touch a little bit about on that if you can yeah of course um it's so a long-term goal for me uh, and i'm gonna i'm not gonna say too much on it mm -hmm. but i kind of want to be you know performing my craft at the highest level you know kind of touring in the biggest stadiums you know do a huge amount of fans and stuff um i don't know when i tell people it sounds very big headed that's why i kind of keep it on the dl yeah uh but you know that's that's kind of for, for me because yeah. that is what i believe uh, that uh, you know i can do yeah. Um, and to kind of achieve that, because obviously that's very, very, very big, that what I've just said. Yeah. <laughs> but to just achieve that, I think it's best to kind of divide into small goals. Because it's easier to achieve the smaller goals yeah. than a one big one. Yeah. You know, because in the middle... It can seem so far away. Exactly. Well. Um, so, you know, the way I do it is I've written all my goals and okay. what the time frame I want to achieve it in. Okay. On the paper. Yeah. And I kind of have it in my room on the walls every day I wake up. It reminds me, yeah. you know, that either I'm not doing enough or whatever. Yeah. And um, also on a regular basis, for example, I tell myself, okay, this week I've blocked a day out. I'm going to record a cover or yeah. I'm going to do this. I'm going to yeah. try and network with someone or something. Okay. So, you know, like you have to prioritize, man. Like yep. with a goal like this, you know, no one is going to come and help or divide your time. If you yeah. do a job 95, you're getting paid. Right? And there's someone above you who is kind of, you know, making sure that you come to work or something and if you don't there's consequences and this there's no consequences yeah it's me i'm my own boss yeah so if i don't do a cover no one else is gonna care yeah but it's just gonna not be not be fine for me the you accountability know? is more on yourself exactly than anyone else. Yep. and you know to distinguish myself i guess obviously the first thing is that i'm a pakistani and i want to do it on a global scale okay so having grown up in pakistan obviously now i'm in the uk in manchester and the plan is to stay here for a bit yeah and you know just just do it here yeah. And it's not that I, I kind of have anything against doing in Pakistan. Yeah. You know, but I just I just feel like not that it'd be easy, it'd be easier because I started off with this journey in Pakistan. Yeah. I've made a few decent contacts um, over the last year and a half. You know, I got to do a gig in Pakistan. Okay. Yeah. So but for me it was always like uh, because I wanted a global scale, if I did in Pakistan it would be kind of taking a shortcut in a way. Okay. Um so I think yeah, being Pakistani, and second, I think it's just you know you're unique. This this I can't really say why I'm better than this person. I can just say why I'm good for myself. You know. Yeah. Um, 
just just the quality of me being good with people um kind of wanting to entertain them you know i'm the right person who gets happy when other people i make other people happy yeah so i think it's just mainly for other people cuz you can't really get too self obsessed over this no, at the end no, of the day yeah. it's the people that put you in a position yeah. where you're at yeah um yeah that's that's like That takes this takes us nicely into actually what I wanted to ask you about regarding staying true to yourself. Mm-hmm. And also you know many artists nowadays you don't really know the person. You just know the their art mm-hmm. and not the artist. And mm-hmm. and yes, sometimes I guess it's good to separate the art mm-hmm. from the artist. Yeah. But having said that now with the you know upsurge in influencers yeah. and all people that yeah. you kind of know their everyday lives yeah. inside out because everything's on camera. Yeah. What sort of a route do you want to take as a musician because you're in a very interesting position where you can choose to take either mm-hmm. route where either everyone knows you yeah. and your art yeah. or people only know one of the two obviously that's, the that's art nice. here yeah, so w- nice. which which route would you want to take and and what do you think some of the difficulties with taking that route would that's, be that's a very good question um i definitely would prefer to take the second route yeah i think um you know actually going to give a little example i've over the last 3 weeks i've been you know Uh, been lucky enough to have been given a lot of opportunities i was able to work uh, on this big festival in manchester called park life oh yeah and i was working main stage so i was basically hanging out with all the artists like you know 50 cent are the creator you know rd all these people and yeah. uh, one thing i did notice was there was a few youtubers there mm-hmm. um bambino becky the other guy called lewis and i had a chat with them and i was just speaking to them and they were very nice like i ended up speaking to those two youtubers for an hour and it was just an all conversation yeah you know and obviously they're famous yeah but you they, wouldn't be able to tell and with the artists it was always like they would never come to speak their people would go out you know so and i and i feel like it's just like who are you to think you're better than everybody else yeah. you know i get it. obviously they deserve the success they have yeah but i feel like being humble will take you way further now obviously i'm saying this right now i don't know what i'll be doing yeah. but that's the one thing i like to you know kind of uh keep reminding myself yeah exactly. that you know if if i am in a position where my life is out there first yeah something i'm choosing to do yeah. so i can't complain with you know this pros and cons yeah um and for me to say that i can't say you know like this 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 so i have to kind of be nice and you just have to realize that everything is being monitored yeah so even even if you're on a bad day yeah. you, although you're a human you kind of it's unfortunate that's how social media works one little yeah. video one tweet no one cares about the context so you kind of have to just you know remind yourself that's why i like watching youtubers and kind of learn from them cuz you know them as a person and the art yeah so i can i want people to resonate with my art and the artist okay so yeah. you want to you would rather take that route yeah definitely definitely so something that when you start off with to consider is that your audience at the start will be all your close friends you know like and i've seen on all the covers you've done as well a lot of comments from people that we mutually know or just yeah. friends that you have from school yeah and i think one thing in particular for you is that from from your school there's actually a lot of people you know and the network is huge yeah when i compare it to other schools and even even my school um so it can be a blessing but it can also maybe be something that makes it harder to deal with because you get you're getting a lot of praise which can sometimes you know it, it is real but it can also have a fake aspect to it some of the praise can just mm. be people just telling you you're good because they're your friend or maybe they're not that close to you that they can say that so just comment for the sake of it so have you identified that and sort of differentiated between that and your real audience yeah definitely i think that's a very 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 good point uh, a lot of people don't don't realize that and from the start i knew that the people that are going to listen to my music and that you know eventually inshallah they're going to be coming on tours and stuff are not going to be my friends yeah they're going to be the wider audience you know yeah. and the people that do comment are most of my friends and stuff and that you find out actually but um you know i will say that i'm very grateful that the school that i went and obviously you know like the friends that we've got we've known with them for like 10 15 plus years and yeah. you know, also obviously when you know someone for that long that that whole niceness spirit is out of the way is out of the way some yeah. very lucky that the friends i've got are very brutal and honest about my yeah. stuff yeah. you know they will tell me oh tanu this cover was good but this one was better 
for this this reason and not in the, like a patronizing way. Okay. You know. Okay. It's never, and I and I and I'm and I knew and I know that I can't take be offended at this. So every time someone says something to me, I take it as a constructive <coughs> criticism. Yeah. So I never get offended. Yeah. Uh, especially people that I do value their opinions. So I know that you know a lot of the compliments are going to be fake. Yeah. But you know when I do see at least even one comment from someone who I don't know at all, I'll yeah. go on their profile and be like, no mutuals, nothing. Yeah. That's when I know that okay, I'm doing something good. Okay. That you yeah. know people that I don't know are also commenting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a metric of. Yeah. Of, of the initial success. That's least. what it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Danu. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming onto the podcast. And just before we leave, just you know, let people know where they could find you and if of like course. what your future projects are. You know. Yeah, yeah. So you find me on Instagram uh, at Daniel Seven, and uh, I've got a song coming out. Hopefully, by the time this podcast is out, it'll be out. And uh, I promise, my voice sounds better in that than this. <laughs> it's been a pretty hectic trip. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, likewise, even my voice is messed but up. Yeah, man. Uh, first original project. Um, it's called Traffic, and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool.